I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and I am the technical chairperson for the Southern California region of the Rolls-Royce Owners Club. And today we're going to cover resealing a Turbo 400 transmission uh, once it's out. Here's the front pump, that gasket that you saw before. As you can see, it gets a little brittle. Just a little. Okay. And then... Is this big square cut O-ring. This one didn't come out in pieces, but it's starting to get kind of hard. Um, this is actually two pieces here. You can see there's five bolts on here. There's a, a gear driven pump or a gear pump in here, I guess they call that. Uh, but we're just resealing it. We're not going to go any further. Uh, there's a lot of holes in here, huh? You got to put it back on the right way, obviously. Because all these, these extra holes, not bolt holes, our fluid passages. Make sure they line up. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, if all the bolts go in the holes, you got it lined up. Because, as you could see, they were not symmetrical in any way. Yeah. Uh, they were totally different. Another smart thing from GM. Yeah. There you go. So now we're going to put the gasket and the O ring on. <clears throat> o ring's pretty straightforward. You put it on the outside. Make sure it didn't get twisted on you. Like it did. If it's twisted and you put it on there, you're going to rip it and then have to take it all back out again once you figure out that it's leaking. Does that o ring have flat sides? It's square cut. Square cut, yeah, okay. Um, now, on these holes. You see there's a group of holes here, that's what I work off of, there's a group of holes here. Just make sure that they line up. Well, normally I'll use a little fluid or grease to hold it in place. Also, a oil on the outside. And one more thing I do is I kind of use a bolt through the hole. Now, as you can see, there's corresponding holes down there, so it's just a matter of. And you look there, you see there's one more. In the case, there's one more hole, so other transmissions will have a bolt through that. This is very. Uh, interesting. It's the same at least. The other thing I have was the boots on the front drive for the UJ's wing, and it's quite a challenge to replace those too. Is it? When you say it's a GM transmission, that's just their design that they have a patent on, but Rolls Royce actually made it, right? Or did GM make it and ship it to them? GM made it. Whoop! It's got you there. It says GM on the case. Yeah. And the hydromatic, there's a tag on here, it usually has some printing on it. Yeah, and the fan says hydromatic. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely General Motors, they supply it for Rolls Royce. And that was another car that stayed in the family forever. The only thing Rolls Royce did was make the electric connection. Negative effect on electrons, you just put the electric gear. Yeah, they had the servo motor. You see, what I did there was I got two bolts somewhat started before I tapped it in. And these bolts all have little washers on them, so you want to get those back. Same ones? Okay. Do you need to tighten those bolts in the star pattern, or does it not really if the, matter? The manual might say that, but I never have. It's always good to tighten something in a star pattern. Hmm. How much torque do those bolts take? These are 5 16 bolts, so a little more than 15, 18 pounds. So you're not going to get a lot of warpage no matter what. No, it's warpage is not what you're worried about. Stripping the case is. Yeah, yeah. I have a set low, I always do this one on the lowest setting. Right. Basically, all these bolts are doing is holding it 
place in compressing that thin paper gasket. So. If it turns out that you do strip something, can you repair it with a helicoil or something? Yeah, yeah I've done that before. Yeah. <clears throat> Not that I'm anticipating I'll do that, but it's nice to know there are options. Good thing. All right, now we got to put that last seal on. Now, being the kind of guy I am, <laughs> even with that sealer on there, I don't trust it. So. One thing you got to be careful about with this silicone type sealer, by the way, I use something that's called the right stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's made by Permatex. You can actually make gaskets, or a lot of cars, you just make the gasket with it. Uh, I like it because it's got a lot of body to it. A lot of silicones are real thin. So you don't need much, just so you know. The, the danger, like I was saying before, on a transmission is too much of this kind of sealer on there, and it goes into it, it'll cause you all kinds of grief because there's a lot of valves and passages that you don't want to block up or stick up. And you see it's a very thin coat. This is the hardest part of this job, is getting this thing to go on square without damaging it. Fortunately, this is not bought from Rolls-Royce, so it's not 70 bucks. <laughs> it's like three to five. Now they make a tool, a big driver, that you can put this on with. I have yet to make that one yet. It's only been 30 years. Or you got a lathe now, probably. I mean, this is yeah. great. Lathe, great no job. time. <laughs> yeah. and, and the driver is probably not that expensive. Not that expensive, and, and definitely more useful for a seal without a lift. Yeah, come on now. There we go. I got it to bite. Yeah. Good. Soft hammer, by the way, is a yeah. brass hammer. I don't recommend hammers for a lot of things. Now we're going to do the tail seal and housing while it's still on here because it's easier to take it all apart. Now I'm going to tilt it this way because there's still fluid in there. I let it drain all night before I drain the transmission. And then of course the torque converter drained fluid in it since last night. So this just fits on splines. Pretty straightforward. It's a tail flange. The drive shaft bolts up to this. And once again, I'm going to use my hammer and chisel on the back of this to get this seal started. It's got the same kind of flange. And when you deform it like this, you're relieving some of the tension. There's a, about a half a thousandth to a thousandth interference fit on these seals. So that means that the seal is a half to a thousandths bigger than this hole it goes into. Let's see if it worked. Yeah, what do you know? You recommend, uh, I mean, since you already have it out, doing things like the governor, the shift shaft seal, or anything? Oh, I'm going like to do all that. Are you doing all that? Okay. Oh, what I, this in my definition is an external reset which means that I'm not pulling the transmission apart and doing all the seals inside. There are seals for those clutch packs. Uh, and there are rings that go on there, rotating rings that hold fluid passages. Now this is a real common area for, for these to leak. A lot of times you'll do, in the car, you'll do the reseal. You know, you put the gasket on all these seals, a pan gasket, you won't do the front seal but you'll always get a leak out of here, and it's just this gasket surface. Um, they don't come normally with any kind of sealer on them. So you can use a gasket scraper here. Uh, it's just a little awkward sometimes, especially on a real petrified gasket like this. Now the early models of these, the, when they first came on the shadow with this, the, 
The right-hand drive shadows in the first couple years had the high dramatic four-speed, the old cloud transmission, but it was modified a bit to fit in there. They turned it a little bit and they made the oil pan slanted. Uh, plus they changed the insides a little bit. But the left-hand drives, when they came out with these, they had the Turbo 400s and they had a, they called it a switch pitch converter. So it had a, I guess some sort of valving in there that uh, when you came to a stop and you were in gear, it disconnected something, one of the pressure passages inside so the torque converter wasn't loaded. As you notice, whenever you put your car in gear, the engine slows down a little bit. That's because it's loaded up and, it, and you haven't reached that threshold of uh, pressure that engages the transmission fully. So when you give it gas and the engine, the, the engine spins up that torque converter, it raises the pressure and then it starts to give you the resistance you need. So they did that. What they had actually was a switch out on the carburetors, electric switch, so that when you came to the off idle position, it, it made it bypass so there wouldn't be any load on the engine. But that, that went away after 67. That's the only year I know they had that. Why did they get rid of it? It, like it probably didn't work too good. It probably caused them more problems, uh, and they figured it wasn't necessary. I can't do it like you do it on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like with that feature, you wouldn't be able to slowly move the car forward at idle. Right. Yeah, if you take your foot off the brake at idle, the car will creep. And I guess that's what they were worried about. <laughs> and one thing kind of strange that I've seen on a lot, there's a 68 Shadow over there that has that early hydromatic four-speed slant pan. When you go, it doesn't have a park. It has the neutral, uh, just like the silver cloud, and when you put it in reverse, it parks when you turn the car, it goes into park when you turn the car off. But when you go from neutral to drive, it goes into reverse first. It's, it's a weird feeling. All right. So obviously if you're scraping gaskets, uh, you want to try to keep them out of the transmission when they fall off.